Hey guys, good after, what was it still morning? I think it is. I don't think it's lunchtime yet. Hope you guys are having a great uh, Monday so far. Uh, some of us, uh, some of us got a little bit of rain, some didn't. We really need the rain. And today is my fat coffee day, so I have my uh, tablespoon of heavy cream in my my coffee. So guys, today I uh, want to get on here real quick just to talk a little a little bit about uh, keto and fats. Uh, there's a lot of um, seems to be a lot of questions on these uh, keto group sites about you know how much fat should you be having on keto. A lot of a lot of people are talking about uh, counting calories um, and you know so forth. But you know I haven't seen really anybody talk about counting grams. And honestly, uh, Emily and I we don't we don't uh, count ca uh, calories at all. Uh, mainly, we focus on grams, you know, fat grams. Obviously, uh, being on alternate day fasting, we're, you know, we're doing high, high good dietary fats and low carbs. And we combine it with uh, all alternate days. But um, the issue I'm seeing out there is a lot of people don't realize how easy it is to overeat fat. Now, good dietary fat can still throw you out of ketosis or can throw you out of fat burning if you're eating too much of it. And most of the people so far that I'm seeing or who I've talked to who have had, have, haven't had good success with doing a um, high fat, low carb uh, meal plan, uh, most of them are making major mistakes. They're, e they're either uh, thinking it's a high protein diet and they're eating too much protein or they're eating, they're overeating fast thinking that they're uh, eating good dietary fats, but they it actually can accumulate pretty fast if you're eating uh, two to three meals a day or if you're snacking on nuts, it, it accumulates pretty fast. So the bottom line is when you're first beginning or when you're first starting out, uh, most of the trainers out there that actually know what they're doing when they're using the ketogenic diet or high fat, low carb meal plan like we, we do, most of them will start their people off by calculating uh, the amount of uh, grams, fat grams, protein grams, and carb grams they should have per day. Now, there is a platform uh, to, to, that you can use to get started. Um, all of us aren't the same. So the amount of fat grams that I consume per day or the amount of protein grams I consume per, per day or the amount of uh, carbs I consume per day may not work for you. So you, but you do have to start somewhere. And so that's our job is to start somebody off at a even platform and work our way either up or down. A lot of people tend to have that mindset that eating less is going to help you lose more weight. And that's just not true. It's going to actually help you gain more weight, but you've got to find that zone that where your metabolism is constantly staying up there and you want to find that fat burning zone where you're constantly in fat burning and that's why you have to monitor your blood glucose levels with a meter and your blood ketone level to make to keep you in track um, i've seen it happen so many times where somebody says well i'm eating the I'm, you know i'm eating 75 percent fat uh, 20, 25% uh, protein, that's what they're getting their calories from, and 5% carbs, and um, yet my, I don't have any ketone levels. Well, because you could be eating too much fat, 75% might be too too much. We just, that's something you've got to fi figure out. Uh, what we do, or what we did, is we actually calculated, this is a paper that I have on myself, this is based on, on 2000 calories. And what I did, what works for me 
that helped me keep losing that lean or that body fat and to keep adding lean muscle is I couldn't really, I can't do the 75% fat or the 20% carb or, or pro, pro, protein if I'm going to uh, burn more of my own body fat and add lean muscle because we train so hard. We, we do interval progressive training, strength training six days a week that I have to up my protein more. And because of our age, those of you that follow me know that I did a video about this, that seniors, especially our age, need more protein than you youngsters do because we just don't metabolize protein like we did when we were younger. So we need to up our protein a little bit higher. And then on top of that, we're exercising, uh, doing strength training even harder. And so what I have to do is I have to stay around 60% of my calories have to will come from fat. And I have to bump my uh, protein up to about 35% of my calories and then 5% uh, carbs. Now I'm very carb sensitive. So I have to stay within a certain window of carb grams. Now, some of you get a little, uh, what's that word I'm trying to say? You might get a little too focused on being exactly on the number. Once you've figured out your carb grams and your protein grams and your fat grams, and you're so focused on staying on those numbers, you don't need to be that focused, that concerned. You just need to be around the area. You, it, it could be plus or minus a few grams, guys. It's not gonna hurt you to go a little bit above. It's not gonna hurt you to go a little bit below because it's just the, the range there there's enough play in there for you to be able to take advantage even if you're a little high or if you're a little low but you can't go too high obviously and you don't want to go too low especially when it comes into your pro protein if you're looking to add lean muscle but let me just give you an example of what i'm talking about for me it seems that uh 2000 calories a day 2200 calories a day seemed to work for me pretty good. Now this, I'm talking about my uh, non-fasting days. And so um, for me, around 2000 calories a day, sometimes I even go higher. So there's no real, I mean, I, I just got a, I've got a plan. I got a structure that I know I have to stay in, but I'm more concerned of, I, I was more concerned at the beginning of my grams, not my calories. I don't care about my calories. But if I stayed within my fat grams or I stayed within my protein grams or my carb grams, I knew I was getting 2000 calories a day when I'm doing my non fasting days. So I don't really, so I didn't really care about the calories, but it was the fat grams and the protein or the carb grams that I really had to watch. And for me at 2000 calories, my fat grams need to be within 133 grams a day. So that's, for the whole day. Okay, so obviously, um, because we train so hard and we're, we still want to put on some lean muscle mass, and plus, we want to help to slow premature aging by making sure we have enough protein, that I have calculated out that I need about 133 fat grams a day to stay within my fat burning um, zoning or zone that works best for me. My protein grams, I need to be up around 175 grams. Now, now, do I hit it every single day? No, not all the time. Sometimes I don't hit it for two or three days, but I'm stick. But I'm I'm in that range. I could be 150, 160, or 170, and I know I'm doing the right thing because I'm um, my training is still. I still have plenty of energy. I'm recovering. That's the big. That's the key there. When you know if if you're not having enough protein and you're training hard, you don't your body's going to tell you, <laughs> come on, man, you, you need to up your protein because I'm not going to be able to recover. I mean, you're breaking down all these muscle fi fibers, but you're not giving me the food to rebuild them again. So I can't recover. Well, by the time Emily and I walk out of that gym, we are fully recovered within a few minutes. We're, we're totally recovered. We could go right back in an hour later and do the exact same thing as hard and still be recovered. So we know that that range of one for me, 140 to 141 to 160 to 150 range, if I can stay in that range, I'm okay. So I'm not a glutton and I'm not focused on having to be at, at 175 grams, which, you know, I try. 
But I do have to focus pretty hard on the carbs because I'm very carb sensitive. I mean, if my carbs are over uh, what my, according to my 2000 calories, um, I need to be at about 25 grams of carbs per day. So do I go to 26 sometimes or 27 or 28? Probably. Do I go below 20? Yeah, I do. I get below 25 grams on my non fast on my fasting days when I do my fasting days on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Saturdays, I'll get below 25. I also will get above 25 sometimes depending on what I'm eating. And so because we are so fat adapted and so ketone adapted on my fasting days on my main on my one meal that I have I might have a starchy I might have a sweet potato or, or yam or a couple slices of sourdough toast for dinner and uh, it's but, but I'm still within you know a, a half of a medium uh, sweet potato I think is 11 grams of carbs that's it <laughs> and so so I'm still with I'm still I'm on my fasting days I'm still below the, the 25 grams if, even if I have a half of a medium uh, sweet potato so it just it comes it, it works out in the long, in a seven day because we calculate our um, calories per week not per day basically we like to and so obviously what we're doing is working for us okay but that what the issue is that I'm seeing is people don't realize how quickly they can they can get their fats up they they might be they might be uh, limiting their carbs their starchy carbs I mean they uh, eliminate all their breads and all their white flours and box uh, pastas and things they've added in more good dietary fats you know olive oil MCT oil olives uh the uh salmon uh, bacon you know, stuff like like that but you really have to be careful because it's very easy to creep up on your fat grams and you don't and you don't even know it you know uh you know uh we we snack on either almonds or we snack on macadamia nuts one of the biggest issues i see there is people people snack on too many of them uh, it should only be at you know if you're snacking you don't you only need like five or six that's it as a snack and that's and you're done but if you're if you're looking at 10 or 20 or 30 figure out the fat grams in that kind of adds up along with your other fat fat grams you see you see what I'm saying here so the bit the, the, the thing is what you're looking to do is when you're first starting out find out where your fat grams need to be where your protein grams depending on how you exercise i mean if 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 you don't exercise then you don't need as much protein obviously you still need the protein but not as much it's really the carbs it's the type of carbs you're eating and the amount of carbs now the carbs are the same way as fat they can creep up now for example you know like um you know keep your carbs to veggies and salads because those are the lowest as far as grams i mean you can have quite a bit you know if you're if if you're like me and you're on a 2000 uh, calorie a day uh, meal plan and 25 grams is your limit as far as carbs figure it out i mean one cup of green beans is only four grams of carbs so at both meals you know if you're having two good solid meals a day you can have quite a bit of vegetables on those both those meals uh, you can also have your, you know, what you really want to do is, is if you're going to have a sweet potato or a yam or some brown rice, a low glycemic starch, uh, like sourdough or rye, a couple of them, you just, you want to have those at the middle of the day or for your lunch or for your first meal. Try to keep those starchy uh, carbs for the middle of the day. Then have your vegetable carbs uh, in the evening and not have the, uh, the yam and stuff. Now on our fasting days guys we can do that we do have our yams I, I, I never really like yams or sweet potatoes but my taste buds have changed my body has changed and uh, I had a I had a half a medium uh, sweet potato last night for dinner and I, I tell you it was it was almost as good as having mashed potatoes might have been even better because it had a little sweetness to it natural I didn't have to add any brown sugar or nothing. I didn't need it. 
And so, and plus my body would would react to that much sugar. And so, guys, you just got to be really you you, you want to find out. You might have to count or or watch your carb uh, your grams for a few weeks just to get used to it because what happens is like us we've been doing this for so long I can just I can estimate what I'm eating and I know how many carbs or how many grams of fats in it I know how many grams of proteins in it and I know how many grams of carbs is in it because we've been doing it for so long so I don't have to count them anymore I don't have to even my meals that I have in my Cook, cookbook are, are pretty much geared for me and so the amount of grams of fat and carbs and protein in those meals when we combine them are within what I need to be in which means most of you probably are the same same way now obviously my wife you know she doesn't need as many calories as I do and so we based her uh, meal plan on about 1500 gram or 1500 calories. So, you know, most people's metabolism, you're probably burning 2000 calories a day. So if you're eating, uh, if your calories per day are around 1500, then you're going to lose a pound a week, which is actually when you're, that's the standard, that's the standard way of losing weight. But when you're on a, uh, uh, high fat, low carb meal plan, and you're combining it with intermittent fasting, you're going to be losing more than a pound a, a week. You're going to some some people losing four to five pound, pounds a week, depending on their metabolism, how active they are, and how healthy their thyroids are. But uh, people are losing weight like crazy when they calcul when they got it, their meal plan structured and dialed in. So, like I said, you might have to calculate your your grams and just Keep, you know, put them on an app on your phone and for about two or three weeks, just keep, uh, foc you know, focusing on those set grams, either fat, protein or carbs or and just uh, get an idea. And then af after you've done it for a while, then you don't need to worry about it anymore. And like I said, don't don't be so focused on on staying exactly at a I mean. Mine is, like I said, fat grams per day is 133 grams. Uh, protein grams is 175 grams a day. Uh, carb grams is tw 25. Now, I already, that's, that's, for, that's so I can lose, keep losing more body fat that I want to lose, but I also want to keep gaining lean muscle mass. Am I focused on 133 grams a day? I would like to stay at that. Do I go over that sometimes? Probably. Do I go under that sometimes? Yeah, especially on my fasting days. <laughs> you see? Uh, protein grams, same thing. Now, do I, I want to try to stay at 175, but do I make it? No. Does it, is it affecting my strength? Absolutely not. Is it affecting me not getting some lean muscle? No. And a good example is today, because for two weeks, those of you that follow me, Emily and I did some pretty major extended fasting so for those two weeks, and we also did a three-day bone broth fast. And uh, we changed our workout for those two, two weeks to make it a little easier on our body. We didn't go as heavy, and we didn't go as long, but now to, today we went right back on our strength, our, our uh, interval and progressive strength training where we, we do strength training six days a week. And actually I, we were both stronger. I was stronger. I, I, was, I started out at what I left two weeks ago. At those weights I, I left two weeks ago, I, I was, I actually am going to have to go up five pounds on, so on some of them. So obviously what we did worked for us to make us even stronger, which means most likely I gave my body, my muscles a little bit of rest so they could recuperate even more so, even though we are recovered by the time we leave the gym. But now I'm even stronger than I was when I left two weeks ago to do these extended fasting, these extra ones, and to do the three day bone broth. We did it, I think we did it for uh, two weeks. We did it once a week for two two weeks. So it worked, you know? So anyway, guys, you just gotta really watch your fat gram and watch your carb gram and just make sure that um, you don't creep up too high and educate yourself to know when you do go out to dinner or when you do have meals, you can kind of get 
give your mind an idea of, of what to do because I'll tell you, if you're eating too much fat, even though it's good dietary fat, you are going to sabotage your weight loss. It will slow it way down, okay? Because the object, obviously, is not to burn as not to burn the fat from the food you eat. You want to burn your own stored body fat. So if you're eating too much dietary fat, when are you going to have a chance to burn your own stored body fat? Well, it's pretty difficult to do that. Okay, so guys, if uh, you guys, if you want to see some more inf information, go to my YouTube channel, type in Bill Mabry, subscribe to it. Also, if you want to see some of my fat burning recipes, or I have a couple of uh, really good uh, ebooks in there for free in the download section, uh, go to my Facebook group page, Fat Loss Made Easy, and join the group. So I hope you guys got some uh, value out of this. And I'm going to talk next time, I'm going to talk about autophagy. Uh, the health professionals and the personal trainers just are not focusing on the benefits of autophagy, even though research keeps bringing out new science about it. And a, one of the top researchers won a Nobel Prize for discovering autophagy and how it benefits with many disease models. And there's only one way to get into autophagy, guys. You need to learn how to intermittent fast. You need to learn that. You need to learn the different programs that are involved in intermittent fasting to keep you in autophagy and to keep you and to get you into therapeutic autophagy if you have some kind of a medical issue. So we'll see you at the next video. You guys have a great day.